For tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from the Sex and Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com or lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2012 Deliverance Ministers Conference being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Thursday morning, October the 25th, 2012. Gene Fisher is the speaker of the service teaching on the power of giving thanks. Uh, I'm doing an experiment here. I actually did my notes while we're on the road in my laptop and I didn't have a printer. So I'm counting on being able to... I've never actually done this before, so we'll see how this works. I've seen people do it, so... so. Well, I wanted to share with you while I was booting up um, something that you know God's done in my life recently to um, minister to me. And so, um, can I start out by praying? Lord Jesus, I just, um, I'm just so grateful to you for the beautiful and and um, very careful work that you do in our souls, the way that you know us better than we know ourselves, and you know how we're wired, and the way you come, and, and, and sensitivity and kindness, Lord, you come and, and work inside of us to bring out, Father, the, the person that you created. And Lord, I just thank you for that work. And Lord, you know that it's hard sometimes when you do things inside of us. It's hard for me, Lord, sometimes to put that into words or to make a teaching from it. And so, Lord, um, I just pray that you would minister today on this, that you would, that you would show people your heart, that people could see your heart, Jesus, and that seeing your heart, they could be set free, Father. I pray this in your name. Amen. You know, my husband was up here with five sermons, and I want to tell you right now, that is not my gift, okay? I think, I think what I have more is like along the Bible thought kind of thing for y'all today. So I, um, but I think it's an important thought, and so I want to try and share it with you. So if you'll turn to Romans 1, I want to talk to you today about giving thanks. And, um, yeah, I was really uh, gratified by our brother saying that because sometimes you just don't know if you're hearing the Lord or not. And so, um, but this is something the Lord spoke to me recently. I, um, I've had a lot of deliverance in my life. When I got brought into the kingdom, I came in from a lot of darkness. And um, I'm so grateful for deliverance. So grateful. Because I don't think I could have walked the walk. I think that I would have fallen away. I just don't think that I could have... And God was so faithful, so faithful to take me where I needed to go, when I needed to go there, to get what I needed to get. Because I was helpless without Him. And you can so trust Him that He who began a good work in you will be faithful. He knows what He's doing, people. He knows what He's doing. And I'm so grateful because every time I think I know, I mess it up. And he takes me someplace I didn't expect. And this is one of those uh, places because I am, uh, as much deliverance as I've received, I'm still aware that there's more that I need. And there are some particular areas that I have been frustrated with and I'm crying out to the Lord about why I cannot get freedom in these areas. And he brought me to this scripture and I saw something that was, where before you know how it is, you know something, but... Sometimes the Lord shows you, and then it's like, I didn't know anything. I just had a principle. I just had a good idea. I just had something that would preach, but I didn't really understand. And this is one of those scriptures. It'll start in verse 18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived. I told Bo last night, I said, this this particular sentence in the Bible just blows my mind. His invisible attributes 
had been clearly perceived. Only God could say something like that because it makes no sense. But, you know, if you understand what he's saying, it's like, yes, it's we who don't make sense. He makes sense. So it had been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that had been made. So they were without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. And if you continue on the scripture, I didn't put it. He says, then I gave them over. And what followed then was all sorts of degradation and perversion and moral failure. Okay? So, in crying out to the Lord, I was reading my daily devotional one day, and the scripture was in it, and he just highlighted that sentence. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. And growing up, I mean, I grew up in a church, and I never had a hard time believing in God. That was just my struggle. I don't think most kids do, honestly. I think a child doesn't have a struggle with that. You have to tell them that God, you have to tell them, you have to program them to not believe. So believing in God was not an issue, and my parents did the best they could. They took me to church. You know, and it wasn't necessarily, I didn't necessarily see a walk of faith, but they told me just by taking me to church they thought it was important. And I appreciate that very much. And so I didn't have a problem. In fact, I just, I really had a soft place in my heart for God growing up. But I tell you one thing that I was not, and that was thankful. I was not thankful growing up. And the Lord took me back to this issue of thanks for me personally as a root. Did you know that not giving thanks is a root in so many people's lives? And I know that a lot of you are mature Christians, and you know this, but I'm guaranteeing you, if you are in ministry, you are going to minister to so many people. So this is a root problem for them that causes so many different issues. Not only can it cause the moral issues, thankfulness can be a root cause of moral issues, of failures in sexual areas and failures in other arenas. It's also a root issue when it comes to jealousy. It's a root issue when it comes to self-pity and a variety of different things. And because basically when you're not thankful for God, you're doing something that's it's so much more than just having a bad attitude. You know, being grateful to me was always like an attitude adjuster. Let's adjust the attitude. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You know, but it's so much more. It is a fundamental principle that puts you in a place of being able to receive from God and, and to become who he created you to be. Because there is something about giving thanks that opens your heart to him. It connects you because it brings you into a place of humility before him. And so now there's a connection. But the inverse is true too. If you're not thankful, you put a wall up and you cut yourself off from your very creator. And when you cut yourself off from your very creator, then you become exactly what the scripture says. You become futile. Because... What futile means is to have no purpose. And you have no purpose outside of the purpose that God put in you. So you cut yourself off. You cut yourself off from your creator. You cut yourself off. You know, this is where it gets hard to explain. You know, it's revelation inside of here. But sometimes words seem to they, they, they trivialize, trivialize things rather than explain them. So, but, but you cut yourself off from who you are because only God knows who you are. And so when you cut yourself off from God by being ungrateful, then you, oh my gosh, open yourself off to becoming any number of things, but they're not what God said that you are. And so you become futile and your heart becomes darkened. And what that means is that you can no longer perceive spiritually. A darkened heart is a hard heart that can't see God and can't perceive God. And when you're cut off from God and your heart is hard, you know, there's just no telling where you'll end up. You'll do things you never thought you would do. You'll go places you never thought you would go. There's no end to godlessness. And so, you know, God brought me back to this. And um, and um, there's two things I want to bring out. Number one is just the deliverance aspect of this. Because, you know, going back and being able to thank God in certain places of our life can bring freedom to us in areas that we've not been able to receive freedom. And the other is more of the discipleship issue of this, because 
this, you know, I, I'm teaching on the importance of giving thanks, not the importance of a grateful heart, because to get a grateful heart, you have to cultivate it by giving thanks. Giving thanks is a choice that we have to make, okay? So you have to make the choice. You can't just ask God for a grateful heart. You must continually make a choice to give thanks. Now, when do we give God thanks? Y'all know the scripture. I knew you would. <laughs> well, let's turn there anyhow, because I just happen to really like this scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. <clears throat> All right, y'all tell me when you're there. It says, Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. (laughs) Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You have people coming to you wanting to know what God's will is for their life? This is it. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. You know why that's God's will? If you'll do this, it doesn't matter where you're at or what you're doing. You're going to glorify Him and you're going to do great things for the kingdom. And so many people are looking for like a role or a ministry and all you need to do is rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Let me ask you something. Give thanks in all circumstances. Let's really think about that. I mean, is God, is He unkind? Because there are some circumstances that are extremely painful. There are circumstances we go through in life that are very, very difficult, right? I mean, this is a good one to put up on the kitchen wall, you know, and it sounds good, but how does it feel when you're going through loss? How does it feel when you're going through financial, you know, disaster? How does it feel when someone you love is uh, turning to destructive behavior? How did all the things that we go through in life, I mean, is the scripture, what is the scripture then? Is God not kind that he would want us to give thanks? But God knows something about us that we can forget when times are hard and when we're in pain. He knows something about us that if we'll just trust him and believe him, that can do, he can do for us what no one else can do for us because God has an eternal perspective that we don't have. Um, I guess the song we sang earlier said it best. It said, you can give thanks in all circumstances because the Lord has promised good to you. And the Lord's promise is eternal and forever and cannot be broken. And so when you go through hard times, remember the Lord has promised good to you. And so many people that I have known, when they go through the hard times, that's when they turn their heart away from the Lord. And it's, it's not something to trivialize. It's so easy to do. I mean, God created us with real emotions. We feel real pain. We're not like, we don't become robots when we become Christians. You know, we're human beings. And that's why when Jesus calls himself the Son of Man over and over and over again, it ministers to me so much because he says, I did that so I would know. I'm touched by the feelings of your flesh. I understand, right? And so it's easy to be thankful under the right circumstances. But I believe that the key to maturity, to joy, to peace, and ultimately to fruitfulness in our life is found in the all of this scripture because it takes Faith. You can't do it by feelings in those times. You have to do it by faith. And when you do it by faith, you stand in the face of hell and the devil and you say, I don't look at my circumstances. I look at what I know is true. And I will agree with what is true no matter what you're saying to me. And I will agree with what is true no matter what's going around in my life. I will agree with what is true. I will put my alignment with what is true. And I do that by simply giving thanks. Because when I give thanks, I'm saying he's good. And I'm saying he can be trusted. And I'm saying that I will not go the way of the world and let the circumstances dictate what I believe. Because I'm standing on a rock. And a rock doesn't move. And you don't know how many times we're on our hands and knees and we're clinging to the rock. It's not easy to stand on the rock sometimes. But one way that we do that is by in those times of temptation, of trial, and pain, by simply practicing this, give thanks. Give thanks. And I went back to a particular time in my life 
when I was particularly unthankful. And what I was really unthankful for was, was who I was. Somehow I, I believed a lie. And this is something that I see in person after person after person. I believed a lie that there was something wrong with me. And that was somehow God's fault. But that's, you know, a big, a big lie of the devil. And the Lord had me go back and give thanks in this time particularly for who I was. You know how hard that was for me? I didn't know that. You know, I, I have walked past so much and I'm pretty happy. You know, and I, I like who I am fine. I like my life. You know, but to go back to this particular time, I can't tell you how difficult it was for me to say, I give you thanks. I give you thanks for who you made me. Because it took me back to a time of such insecurity. It took me back to a time of such rejection and pain and not feeling like I was, I had what it takes to be, you know, one of the people that I wanted to be. And that there was just something. And to go back and give thanks, but you don't know the freedom that it brought to me because it acknowledged that all of that stuff was a lie. That I was exactly who God wanted me to be. It was a lie. And going back and giving thanks began to break the the self pity, the jealousy. The, you know, I I think about the scripture in Peter. Let's see, I think I wrote it down if I can find it. I'm not even going by this. But the one about uh well, I'm not gonna try to quote it. Here it is. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. I always think of that thing as something strange were happening to you. It's like Peter, he can't even understand because he lived in such a midst of such persecution and trials like, you know, it's normal. And he said, you know, as though something strange were happening to you. Um, I'll be honest, I have a friend I've always wanted to quote this to. <laughs> and I, and I told Bo, I said, I wonder what people always want to quote to me. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to know. <laughs> but she always acts so surprised, like when her car breaks down, like, this ought not to be happening. I'm a Christian. This ought not to be happening to me. Why is this happening to me? This doesn't happen to other people. I don't know what she's thinking, you know. And, and I always wanted to say, you act as though something strange were happening to you, you know. I always think about Jesus. Jesus said, in the world, you will have tribulation. Now, there's a promise of God we don't like to stand on. In the world, you will have tribulation. Do you know that all the world can stand up and say amen to that? Even unbelievers can stand up and say amen to that? But the B part is what sets us apart, and that's to take heart. I have overcome the world. See, the promise of Jesus that he's overcome the world is everything to us. Everything to us. Because if this world is going to dictate to us the state of our well-being, our emotional well-being, then we're in trouble. But we stand on the rock because someone who's overcome the world. I had a friend when I was a brand new believer. I was, um, I didn't know the first thing about anything. I didn't go to church. I didn't know you were supposed to go to church. And I had this friend who was kind of eccentric. His name was Totilla. And he insisted that you spell it with a small t. So, Totila, if you're out there, I still love you. He was my church because he was a believer and I'd come to him all the time. He'd keep on getting church, girl. But he used to, I used to come to him so full of fear. Oh my God, it's all, it's all falling apart, Totila. It's just, it's not going to work. <laughs> and he used to always go, okay, what's the worst that could happen? Oh, well, um, I could lose my job. Well, what's, what could happen after that? Oh, I could go broke. And what could happen after that? Uh, and he'd always take me back down to, I could die. <laughs> and he'd go, and then what happens? Okay, all right. I see your point. <laughs> okay, I see your point. And that may sound trivial, I mean, but the truth of the matter is, what is it like to walk, across, walk through the world as an indestructible human, an indestructible person? I mean, you, you can't be killed. Because you've died already if you're in Christ. You can't be killed. What could happen to you? A little pain, a little inconvenience, you know? And then glory. I mean, do we and I have a reason to be grateful? Every moment of our day, in every situation, no matter what happens, I just want to encourage you to give thanks. Don't just say, I want a grateful heart. Give thanks. Give thanks. This scripture that I read in Philippians does not leave a moment of our life untouched. It's... Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks. He did that on purpose. That wasn't just good poetry. 
every moment of our life, because every moment of our life, He wants to live in connection with us. And if you do that, you're just walking through life with Jesus. All right? You're just walking through life with Jesus, then you are okay. You are okay. Okay? You may, doesn't mean you won't hurt, have some struggles and pains, but you are okay. Because fundamentally, we were not created for comfort. We were not created for success. We were not created for any of those things. We were created for relationship. And in Him, we are complete. And the one thing that I know for sure is that He promised He would never leave you. He would never forsake you. And there is not another promise that if I had a million years that I could think of any promise that I wanted, I couldn't think of a better promise than that one. He will never leave because in Him you are complete. And that's why this scripture hit me so much is because I had a knowledge of God but I was not thankful to him. So for many, many years in the formative time of my life, I had cut myself off from the one who loved me so much, had such a plan for my life, knew what I was really about. Instead, I turned and looked to the world and looked to other people and said, tell me who I am supposed to be. Because I didn't have a creator. I cut myself off from him. Now, he was there. He was, oh, he was there. And he, time after time, finally... You know, I ran up the white flag. But some of us have harder heads than others. <clears throat> the other point I wanted to point out is about cultivating this. And I, I just want to, I just noticed this. And so I want to talk about this just real quick. If y'all turn to Exodus 15. And I did not write these scriptures. You know, the first part of this chapter of the Bible is one of the most incredible Songs of praise in the whole Bible. And we're not going to read it, but they just write a beautiful, grateful song to the Lord for the deliverance that he had just done. Right? But one paragraph later, in verse 22, it says, Then Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea, the site of their great victory. And they went into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. Therefore, it was named Marah. And the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Okay? He grumbled. So, just one paragraph past the greatest song of thanks ever, they begin grumbling. And y'all know this. And you know the dangers of grumbling. I mean, just do a little word search on it if you want to know. But the thing I want to point out to you is if you continue to read the story of Israel, it continues the same way. Right now you could cut them a little slack, okay? They just got saved. If you're using them as an analogy of a Christian, they would have just got saved, okay? They really haven't had a lot of experience with this Lord, okay? He came through for them, okay? All right, so he destroyed the greatest civilization that ever been for them, okay? But that was then, okay? So he did this great miracle and brought them in, you know, I don't know what that looked like, but I sure want to pull the DVD when I get to heaven. And so they pulled him across. So he did that, but, you know, so what has he done for us lately? And the reason I point this out is because it happens time and time again. They don't get over it. It's not like they go, oh, wait, 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 wait. I think he really is for us. I, I think he really is for us. Wait, we don't have to worry. We can stand still a little bit. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We don't have to. They never come to that conclusion. And the testimony of them in the scriptures is not a good one. If you look at Psalm 106, let's just go there for a minute. I think it's Psalm 106. I hope I did this right. Does Psalm 106 start out, praise the Lord, I'll give thanks to the Lord for he is good? Okay, good. This psalm is a testimony. This is their legacy. How many of you want to leave a legacy? All right. Well, this is the legacy of the Israelites. And it starts out, and it's as if the psalmists were starting out saying, oh, this is what I wish they had said. This is what needed to be said. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. But then in verse 7, he has to say the truth. Our fathers, when they were in Egypt, they did not consider your wondrous works. They did not remember the abundance of your steadfast love but rebelled by the sea 
at the Red Sea. Yet he saved them. He still came through it time and time again. For his name's sake, that he might make known his mighty power. He rebuked the Red Sea. It became dry. He led them through the deep as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of the foe and redeemed them from the power of the enemy. The waters covered their adversaries. None of them were left. Then they believed his words. They sang his praise. But they soon forgot his works. And they did not wait for his counsel. Now, I submit to you that they had not cultivated a grateful heart by learning to, in all things, give thanks. It's something they needed to learn. They needed to learn it by giving thanks so they could cultivate a grateful heart. And so, they never learned this. And it says in verse 14, they had a wanton craving in the wilderness and put God to the test in the desert. A lack of thankfulness will breed discontent in your life. In fact, the Greek word that is translated complain actually means someone who's not content. So, you know, um, we're all contending for more. But to not be content with where you're at and to be grateful right where you're at, no matter where it is, is to open yourself to deception that you need something else in order to be complete in Christ right now. And I know so many people who think if they just had this relationship, if they just had this ministry, if they just had this job, But I'm telling you, if they had the ministry, the relationship, the job, they would still think they need something more because they've allowed discontent to get a hold of their soul because they haven't been thankful. You always want more. God, lead me into greater things. But I'm just so thankful to you right now for what I have, for who I am. I am so thankful. I am so thankful. If you never did another thing for me, I am so thankful to you. Now, Lord, give me more. You know? (laughs) But... It's got to be cultivated by being thankful for where we are right now. Or you, you open your heart to discontent. It becomes jealousy because you look around and you think other people have something. I don't have. They have the ministry. They have them. If I had what they had, I could do what they did. And God's saying, no, you could not. Because you're not even playing the hand you've been dealt. What makes you think you could play theirs? You know, play your hand and then I'll deal you another one maybe. Okay? So... They were not careful to cultivate thankfulness in their heart, acknowledging the great things, and this developed the what have you done for me lately attitude. But you know what's really sad is the fruit of this is that he could never bring them into their destiny. They were destined for the promised land. They didn't make it. He couldn't bring them into the promised land because they never positioned themselves in a place where he could do that for them. They cut themselves off constantly looking at their surroundings instead of giving thanks to him. That's a very sad thing. That's a very sad thing. You know, I want to look at some examples uh, just real quickly. Go through these quickly. But, you know, King David is one of the best examples of thanks. And when we look at the Psalms, he'll say things over and over like, I give thanks to you, Lord, with my whole heart. That's the thing about King David. He never did anything halfway. I have thanks for him my whole... Even when he sins, it's pretty way out there. Okay? So, he was just that kind of a guy. He wasn't like, you know, a, a, a little bit here. He was like, so, I give you thanks with my whole heart. And you know God said, oh, I love that. I love that. You know, I'm just going to do great things in your life. Just because you're so thankful. Now, when was he thankful? Was he thankful when he was king? Or was he thankful when he was in the cave with his discontent and what is the three Ds, the malcontents that came to him in the desert and he had a maniac pursuing him to kill him <laughs> and was cut off from his family and his home and he's still in there going, oh God, I give you thanks with my whole heart. You know, most people go, are you nuts? What's wrong with you? I'm not nuts because I have a really good God and that's all I need. That's all I need. So David's a good example. Um, but you know, I was thinking about this too. If you do a little thing on thanks, one thing that keeps coming up is, some, is Jesus. And you know, if you turn to turn here to John 16. No, I'm sorry, that's not the right place. Oh, it's in the Last Supper. See, I didn't preach in order, so now I'm just flipping through this going. Luke, I should be able to do this from a Luke. Uh, where's the last supper in Luke? Here it is. Uh, Matthew 26, I'm sorry. Matthew 26. Jesus never asked us to do anything that he didn't or wouldn't do. He is our captain. 
Yeah, in verse 26, y'all right, y'all are so good. Okay. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them. Now, over and over and over, this is the place that just stood out to me about Jesus giving thanks. Because you know, when he broke the bread and he gave him the cup, he knew what he was doing. It wasn't the Passover. It was the new covenant, like Bo was talking about, instituting the new covenant, which was the breaking of his body and the pouring out of his blood. And he deliberately gave thanks at that moment. He gave thanks. Now, that encourages me. Because if Jesus could look into the darkest night possible and give thanks because he saw past it, then there's nothing I can face that I cannot be thankful for. You know, Paul did this very thing. We won't go there. But you know the story of the shipwreck when he and the prisoners that were being transported to Rome to be tried were in the boat. And the boat was in a horrible shipwreck and they're all about to die and they've been in there for weeks being just tossed and pummeled about and he gets a word from the Lord that they're all going to be okay. So it says he, he goes out and he says, you guys need to eat. You haven't eaten for weeks. And so he did this very same thing. He took bread and he broke it and he gave thanks. Just like Jesus did. But what is really cool is it says and they were all encouraged after that. There's something about giving thanks that changed the whole spiritual atmosphere around him. It just it shifted from despair and hopelessness. And they looked at this man, he broke the bread, which spiritually I think is significant, and gave thanks and said it's going to be okay. And the whole atmosphere shifted. Now, they had no reason to be encouraged. I mean, they were still going to die. There was no salvation that had been given to them. But somehow they believed him. When he was able to give thanks with peace in his heart, they all said, we believe him. It's such a witness to the world, people. It's such a witness to the world when we can go through the trials and the tribulations with a thankful heart. Not only is it a witness, but we can shift the atmosphere where we're at. We can change and bring in a spirit of hope encouragement and peace wherever we go if we can maintain a thankful heart. Now, I'm not saying that you have to always think everything's okay. You can be real with God. But once you've gotten it out of your heart, give thanks. Give thanks by faith, not by feeling. Tell him how you feel. He can take it, but then give thanks. Don't let ingratitude get a hold of your heart. Thank him. Thank him for one reason only. And that's because he said to. Because when you obey him, then it all works out. But if you try to figure it out, well, it just doesn't make sense. Then you won't obey him. Just give thanks because he said to. Now I want to end with, you know, we went through the story of the Israelites and the very unhappy ending of their uh, testimony. And I want to—I don't like to end with unhappy. Let's end with a happy testimony. <laughs> Y'all like that? Okay. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, I did it again. Okay, Luke 17. <clears throat> Starting in verse 11. I just love this story. I don't know why. I just love this story. It says, On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered the village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voice, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priest." And as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He wasn't shy about it. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Okay? Now, he was a Samaritan. I love that they throw that in there. Now, he was not a religious person. He was not one of the people that you would expect to have, you know, come into the church. You know, Samaritan meant not saved, really. It was a non-believer. It was a non-Jewish person. And they were despised in their culture. And God's always doing that. And he was a Samaritan. Okay? He was the person you would have judged. Okay? Now, he comes in and he gives thanks. And Jesus answered, We're not ten cleansed? We're the nine. Was no one found to return and give praise except this foreigner? Oftentimes it's those those of us in the church who are the least thankful. And... um, 
I think sometimes we get removed from the great wondrous things that God has done and we do kind of get focused on what is God going to do for us next. You know, and we don't realize that um, that we're not giving thanks anymore because we know it is a principle but we have failed to put it in practice or we practice it but we fail to let it touch our hearts anymore. We're not doing it from the heart. Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Now, I thought he was already well. What did Jesus mean? I thought he was already well. Well, the word that he says here is the word... The word that he said, you're cleansed, meant just that. You're cleansed. Your leprosy has left you. But the word that he says, your faith has made you well, is actually the word for salvation. The, the word sozo, which is for salvation, healing, deliverance. Okay? He says, your faith has given you salvation. He walked away with something that the other nine didn't walk away with. And he walked away with something the other nine didn't walk away with because he gave thanks. And by giving thanks, he positions himself to receive more from Jesus. And I don't think that we're really in a position to receive more from Jesus until we're truly thankful for what we have now. And that we're practicing that by giving thanks. And it's so important that Unlike the Israelites who learned from the very beginning to look at circumstances that we from the very beginning learn and teach the people under us the principle of giving thanks. Because when the hard times come and you're already in that habit, then you're going to be okay. But I'm telling you, the time to learn is not when the hard times are there. And so from the very beginning, we want to set a pattern in our souls, a pattern. I had to go back. I had a pattern of unthankfulness in my life and I had to go back and give thanks and give thanks and learn this and God's teaching it to me from the heart to be thankful and to to you know I don't grumble and complain about the little uh, big things but the little things I have felt kind of free to grumble and complain about and I never really sense the spirit of the Lord when I do that you know I know I can be real I don't have to be phony but that's different than giving voice to grumbling and complaining and the Lord's teaching me that. And all things be thankful. Even, I mean, I get impatient with little things like that hinder me as I go my way. And I just, oh, why don't you just get them? I guess I'm going to hurry. And those are the kinds of things. And the Lord's saying, you know, you're cutting yourself off from me. You're not enjoying me right now, are you, Jean? Well, no. <laughs> I'm not. Okay. So, you know, if there was a need right now, how open would you be to it? Well, <laughs> probably not real open. So he's going back and teaching you to pattern thankfulness in the heart every moment without ceasing, rejoicing, being thankful, praying, being in relationship every moment. So um, that's all I have. I want to spend a few minutes praying if that would be okay with y'all. I, um, I'm only an hour before I'm supposed to be, which is amazing to me because I thought I'd been up here forever. <laughs> but... Time goes really slow up here. I think there's different time up here. Thanks, Lou. The eternal gospel. Well, that means when they preach too long. But that gives us a few minutes to pray. How about that? So I want you all to stand, if you will, just for a few minutes, and then you can sit down again. But I like to stand just in response. And I want us to ask the Holy Spirit to come and show us any areas, places from the past, places in the present, Things in our lives where we have not truly been able to give God thanks in. Okay? Lord, I just thank you. I thank you so much for what you're doing. I ask you to come by your Holy Spirit, Father. I I bless you and your work. And I've seen you're already doing tremendous things here today. Tremendous things this week. And these lives of people so hungry for you that they would come here and put themselves in position to receive Father, come. Holy Spirit, come. Lord, I pray. Lord, we don't know. We think we know, but we don't know. And that's why it says that that you give us the Spirit that searches our hearts and knows us and brings up the hidden things, Lord Jesus. I didn't know I was unthankful. Come, Lord. I pray right now that you would come and that you would expose the enemy in ways he's hidden, Lord Jesus. Expose the enemy... The way he hides behind what we think we know. But it's just become, Lord, a a head knowledge and we're not practicing it from the heart. Come, Lord, and and expose the enemy from great 
any religious spirits in any of us that would say, not me, I know better, I wouldn't do that. Break the power of religious spirits, Lord Jesus. Come, Father, and bring, Lord, revelation, revelation, Lord, light. Put the lights on in the dark places, Lord. Bring your light in Jesus' name. Come, Lord, expose the enemy, Lord, and drive him from us, Father, that we can have unbroken fellowship with the Father who paid the price, the most dear price that could be paid for fellowship with us. And we will not, in Jesus' name, allow the enemy to hinder us from the fellowship that he paid such a terrible price to give us. And I pray right now, Lord, that you would come and you would drive back everything that would break the fellowship that we have continually to be able to rejoice and to pray and to give thanks to you every moment of our lives. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over everything that would cause people to have broken relationship, broken fellowship, to not be able to flow in fellowship. I break the power of the lying voices of guilt. I break the voice of the lying voices of shame in Jesus' name. I break the things over people's lives that they believe that they've done that would keep God from loving them when he has forgiven all in Jesus' name. Come, Lord, come in the name of Jesus. I ask you to bring to lie any places where the enemy's gotten a lie that I got a short end of the stick in Jesus' name. I didn't get a good deal. Somebody else got a better deal than me. They had better parents. They had more money. They were more spiritual. They had a better mentor. They had this. I break the power in the name of Jesus of all jealousy and discontent in Jesus' name. I come against you and I break your voice. I break the voice in, that you that you lie and speak discontent into people in Jesus' name. Come, Lord, I cry out to you right now that you would break the lie, Lord, just as you're doing it in my life. And I come against in the name of Jesus. Self-pity. The why? Why me? It's not fair. It's not fair. I didn't get as good a deal. I rebuke self-pity out of this place. I rebuke self-pity out of this place in Jesus' name. I speak to you now and I command you to go in Jesus' name. The way you've got a hold of people and they don't know how blessed they are and how grateful they should be this moment for the wonderful things that you are doing in their lives and for the incredible human being they created. In Jesus' name, I break the power of self-pity in Jesus' name. You're a liar and you are a thief and you rob people and of their joy and of their... Of their um, Peace in Jesus' name. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. I bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I come across, I come against the spirits of fear in Jesus' name. And break the power that you have to keep people from receiving the good things that you have. Come, Lord. I want to come against the Antichrist spirit. Because if you're not able to give thanks, you're not confessing the truth about who he is. In the name of Jesus, I come against any antichrist spirit. I rebuke your power in Jesus' name. I break the power of the lying voices that would lie about who Christ is in our lives. His goodness about the truth about the person he is that would in any way uh, infer that he is not always loving, he's not always good, that he has... In the name of Jesus, I break the power of Antichrist in Jesus' name. I come against um, all spirits that would cause us to always be learning, never coming to a knowledge of the truth, the truth being Christ. All spirits that would attack testimonies or um, the bitterness towards God in Jesus' name. I break your power in the name of Jesus. I break all... Um, People who are disappointed with God, they think they didn't get a good deal, that God's not come through for them. I break the power of that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Come, Lord, set, set people free today, Jesus. I break the power of bondage. You know, bondage comes into our lives when we cut ourselves off from the Creator because we have to have something that makes us feel better. And so I've come against bondage that come in people's life because they have not been in fellowship with God. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of all um, of addiction in Jesus' name. Addictions to cigarettes, addictions to alcohol, addictions to pornography, addictions to escapism, to playing games or watching TV, 
addictions to all sorts of things just to escape and get away from the, the pain and the feeling of rejection that they have when they turn their attention to God. I break the power of bondages. I break you now. You are broken. In Jesus' name, it is time for you to end. It is time for you to end. They're not here because they don't want to be free. You're a liar. And it's time for you to end. I come against all self-destruction. To turn away from God is self-destruction. And that was the testimony of my life for years. Just self-destructive behavior. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of all spirits that would tempt people to self-destruction, self-degradation, to not respecting themselves, not honoring themselves or honoring those around them. I break your power now in the name of Jesus. It's time to end in Jesus' name. I rebuke your power in the name of Jesus. Self-destruction, self-degradation, not knowing that they are valuable, that they are precious to God. In Jesus' name, I break your power. I rebuke you off of this. There's something wrong. I've been tagged. There's a tag on me that says defective. There's a tag on me that says, not like others. I break the power of that in Jesus' name. You're a liar. You're a liar. And today you go in Jesus' name. I break your power in Jesus' name. Come, Lord. I pray right now that you would come and you would impress people. The truth, Jesus, is just the truth of the value that they have. That you would shed your your son's blood for them. That you treasure the relationship with them. I sense that. I sensed that during worship and our sister spoke it out, that you treasure the relationship with these people. And I pray, Father, that they would understand how precious that relationship is. That you you don't just love them like a duty, but that you are so passionate in your love, Lord. That you care about them, that you're just waiting, always waiting. That you actually enjoy fellowship with us. It's hard for us to believe that you actually enjoy fellowship with us. It's not all about what we can do for you. Yes, you want us to do the work of the ministry, but you enjoy just fellowship with us. Lord, come. I pray that you would impress that on us today. Father, I bless you, Lord. I just love you. I just thank you that you, Lord Jesus, are so faithful. I just bless you. I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for the testimony of this camp. That there's freedom in Christ Jesus. That the devil is a dirty liar. Thank you, Father. I bless you. Amen? Okay, guys. Well, that is all I have. But... This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.